Sorry about being late this week, guys. And just a reminder to subscribe. Thank you. Well, everybody, welcome back to the Holly episode of, uh, yes, Holly is trying to get her good graces back and her sister uh, good graces. We're in the studio uh, getting ready to record. Holly's very busy making a nest and she decides on Morgan's wonderful blanket. As Holly's getting older, she's having some issues. (laughs) (laughs) Clearly. She's not wanting to sit still, but uh, she decided to, um, I'll let Morgan take it from here. Mm, You got it. I was, you know, you were the one supposed to be watching her. As I I, watched her. As I set up the studio. Yeah, you watched her squat and pee on my couch. I thought she was literally just making her nest like she always does. She was in a full squat. And then she she just pissed all over my blanket and my couch. Luckily, the blanket was there. So Holly's in deep, deep, deep trouble. She's trying to redeem herself, trying to get loose, trying to get back in Morgan's good graces. It's not working very well. Yeah, she's just a terrorist right now. So uh, to all of you who love uh, Holly and we love our animals, uh, sometimes we have to deal with them a little bit. Yeah, she's getting old. Getting real old. So Morgan has made Poor thing. Morgan has dropped the hammer. She Holly's going in diapers. So here she is, everybody. You love her. <laughs> She's back. Yeah. So this episode is gonna be all about falling in love. Isn't that nice? Yeah. What's it like falling in love? Scary. Is it? Anxiety provoking most times. Uh but happy. I never found fun. it scary. It can be scary after you've been hurt before and you're unsure of, you know, what could happen. It can be rough. It can be rough out there. Rough. Rough. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's do it. Just kick it off. Up first, hey, I would love to know if I should act on my feelings or get over it. Here's the story. I was working at a bar slash hostel last summer where I also met the person this is about. I was 20 at the time and bored of Germany where I was born and raised. So I decided to work somewhere in another country over the summer. He was there on vacation. I don't want to give more locations slash names than needed because people could find out who this is about. I got off of work and stayed at the bar with my friends. He and his friend were there as well. I had this moment of looking at someone and just being like, wow, he is really attractive. Later that night, we started talking and he was such a cool person on top of it. The next three days, we basically spent every minute together unless I needed to work or sleep. We stayed up until 6 a.m. and got up at 10 a.m. to grab breakfast or go on walks, etc. Everyone kept telling me he is clearly interested in you. And there was some situations where I thought we were about to kiss, but nothing happened. I'm a very shy person as soon as I actually like someone. So I was not going to make a move. He was 25 at the time. So I thought he is old enough to not be as shy as me. I know that's just an excuse for me not wanting to get rejected. I am also unsure if I'm too young in his mind and to be someone of romantic interest to him. He told me many private things about his life, and we agreed on basically everything that was important to us. His friends are amazing as well, which is always really telling to me. When they left to travel to their next destination, I was honestly a little sad, even after just four days. For his flight back home, he had to come back, different city, same country, and asked me if I wanted to come and spend his last night with him. I switched my shifts and took a bus to stay with him. We met a now really close friend of mine over there, so we didn't really have much time as in just the two of us. By that point, I had a huge crush on him. Fast forward a couple of weeks later, we texted on a weekly basis. I never felt this way before, but my chest was literally hurting because I missed him so much. That was really scary to me, to be honest, since I didn't know him that well, but also pretty well for this short amount of time. I don't know how I managed to fall for someone this quickly and this hard. I never have before. He ended up coming to Berlin for two days for his work and his friends, coworkers, him and I went out. He was really touchy and even flirty with me, 
but nothing happened again. It would have been a little weird, though, since we were with all of his friends constantly. Fast forward a couple weeks more, still texting and FaceTiming weekly. My friends are telling me I need to get over this guy since he lives in the U.S. and there's no chance of this leading anywhere. We are both not interested in long distance. Now, here's the thing. I'm genuinely not sure if he's interested in me romantically since nothing ever happened. I am also not sure if I just feel so strongly for him even after months just because nothing ever happened and there has only ever been this tension with no outcome rather than me actually wanting this to be a thing. After all, I've only seen this guy for six days throughout the past half a year. Maybe it is just the fact that I have commitment issues after being in a bad relationship and he is very much unreachable, so not really able to hurt me. I have a pattern of liking people that are a little out of reach. I was going to visit him, but now we are planning a vacation together with one of his friends, whom I got to know and I like a lot. I really don't know if I should just try to get over it or tell him. This could potentially end the friendship we already have, but is it fair to just keep it to myself, especially now that we are planning a trip together? He kind of changed my mind about long distance, but that could just be the major crush talking. I know he does not mind open relationships, and I don't either, which would be more achievable. If he is not interested in me romantically, though, that wouldn't even matter. Is it worth it to potentially not have him in my life by telling him about this? How much, what, and should I even tell him? On FaceTime? Seems weird to me. Sorry for my English. I hope I could still get my thoughts across. Love the podcast. She got her thought across. Yeah, it was really good. You got it. And um, take the trip. See what happens. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say anything before the trip. I wouldn't, you know, confess, you know, her all this emotional stuff she's going through. I think I would just take, go do the trip, see how it goes, take it easy, and see what you feel. Mm-hmm. You know, th- that's what we call the organic way. Just let it. It's been going fine. It's been going in a great direction the way it is. Yeah, it might be going slow, but it's. You know, you're finding out really, you're giving yourself time for those feelings to develop and to mature and to miss them and to see what it is. And your guys were able to entertain each other on a, on a telephone call by not overdoing it, by talking 24-7. You're talking once a week or weekly. Um, I say you're doing great. Yeah, it sounds really, it sounds good. I mean, to be able to maintain a relationship with someone for six months on FaceTime and seeing them next to never is really hard. So the fact that they have that chemistry and that foundation is a good sign in my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would just take it easy and go certainly do the vacation together. Absolutely. And then see what, see how you feel after that. Yeah. Well, and what do you think about him not pulling any moves? I mean, they had four days that they met and then there were another two days later. That he, there's something special. He, yeah, he he is waiting. He really wants to see what it is, and I say everything right now is all positive. I don't see one bit of negative here. Yeah, to me, it really felt like he was just trying to be respectful mm-hmm. and not cross any boundaries and really see if anything's there. Um, there is a little bit more context under anything else. Mm-hmm. He is somewhat famous with a growing audience and has to go to Europe rather frequently because of that. He could easily come visit, though, too. I don't have the money to come visit him that often. I will be moving for uni in the end of the year, but against his recommendation of just studying in the U.S. in the city where he lives, I will definitely stay in Europe. That's not going to change anytime soon. Which I think is smart. Like, don't yeah. don't chase someone halfway across the world unless it's real. Like, if you wanted to move to the U.S. for you, that's a different story, but... I, I still I'd still make him work for it. Absolutely. You know, he's, I think I, I it, it's an old time custom. <laughs> no need to change it on this one. Well, and take the trip. I mean, yeah. you're going to be in, I don't know if you're sharing a room or if you get your own room when you travel with him. I don't know what that looks like, but honestly, maybe this is your chance to make out and see if you even want to pursue that. Because there's some people that I've had crushes on and then you make out and you're like, Oh, wow. That was terrible. No. So sometimes it takes, you know, a little makeout session to see if it's 
just your bestie that you love and have a little crush on versus, oh no, I'm actually into that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, moving along. One of this week's partners is Chomps. We've been traveling like crazy for the past couple of weeks and we started our travel with Chomps. I mean, Chomps came in handy when I was on the tube and bopping around London. And unfortunately, we ran out of them by the time we got to Paris. And I was really sad about it because our snack game struggled afterwards. I love eating them on the go and really having that healthy snack option. Each stick has zero sugar and nine grams of protein. And I hate snacks. I just feel empty. And Chomps is way different. Anytime I eat these as a snack, I feel just so satisfied and happy I had it. So you've been taste testing Chomps over the past couple of days. What are your thoughts? I've been chomping on them. You've been chomping. It's perfect. It's a great, it's a great mun- muncher. Flavor wise? Perfect. Zesty or what, savory? Uh, what are we working I with? I got both. I actually had some that today was a little on the hot side you, you threw down my throat, <laughs> but they're great. I really enjoy them. Do you feel like it keeps you on track and eating healthier snack options? Well, I certainly didn't go back to any of my other nonsense. If dad convinced you, Chomps comes in nine flavors, so there's something for everyone. Right now, Chomps is offering our listeners 20% off your first order and free shipping. Go to chomps.com slash FKS for 20% off your first order and free shipping. That's C-H-O-M-P-S dot com slash F-K-S. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. My first love, 22 male, and I, 21 female, have had a long-spanning relationship. We met in high school at 15 and 16 and dated for about two years. The relationship was great. We were best friends, and I finally understood what all the love songs and romance movies meant. We were young, but to this day, I've never been more sure that it was true love. Because we were young and immature, things got rocky. I didn't understand what I had when I had it, and he didn't either. We broke up. But that was just a formality for the next year as we still texted and hung out and acted like we were dating. We were both still in high school or living in our hometown at the time. He went to college a couple of hours away and reached out soon after because he was homesick. We chatted and flirted on and off. After COVID happened and I moved out of state for college, we still texted and got together when I was in town. Over these years, sometimes he would tell me things like nobody compares to me and he only wants me, etc. I was hesitant to reciprocate because of all the red tape. Last summer, he told me he was still in love with me after I had traveled to his town and gone on a date he had planned. I have tried hard to get over him in the past years, cutting contact completely for nine months at one point. I learned a lot of lessons from it and from him, and he helped me grow into a better person, truly. For some reason, we can never completely leave each other's lives. Recently, he told me I was a gold standard in his life as far as women go, and nobody has ever compared. I hate to admit it, but I feel the same way. No man has been willing to give me what I need, what he gave me. Since we went to high school together, there's a lot of drama and history there. I also still have a year of college in another state. What should I do? Ideal outcome, be happy and get some clarity on the situation. Anything else? Neither of us has dated anybody serious except for me recently. And to be honest, that relationship only confirmed how I feel about my first love. I mean, what's her heart telling her to do? Yeah. I mean, you and I could sit here all day long and give, give her ideas. She already knows in her head how you she feels. You don't need our permission. No, I don't think so. I think that, you know, you, you, you go through school and continue that you doing the behaviors you're doing. I mean, if you want to have a, a relationship with him, have the relationship. If you want to just keep it where it is until after you're done with school and you really come back and you guys still feel the same way, look, you're really proving something that if you're really meant to be, you're going to be because you guys have not walked away from one another. You've, you've weathered the storm dating other people and seeing what everybody else has to offer. And you're still coming back with the same answer. That's my person. I think that's what I'm reading here. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's it definitely seems like that is the feeling on both of their parts. Um, I definitely think like you have a year living in another town. I don't know if like, I, I think he, like she says, like she's dated one other person recently, but he really hasn't. So maybe, you know, you guys keep in touch and take the next year to 
hey, let's make sure this is real. Let's go on a couple dates, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't know. I don't know if you need that. But I mean, being separated a year is nothing in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. That is going to fly by. Absolutely fly by. I mean, we're already in September. Your last year of school. You're done next May, June. It's not a full year even. Like Mm -mm. you're you're done so quickly. So if he's your person, it's gonna be then he's your person. But um yeah. yeah. Neither one of you have told each the other one to take a hike and I don't want to talk to you. Yeah, no, I mean the door's been open, you've never closed the door, you you have your friendship. If you want to, you know, focus on work, you know, on on studying and doing school, great. And if you don't want to date, don't date. If you want to date, go on a date. It's nothing's bad's gonna happen here. Because at yeah. the end of the day, you're gonna you're gonna only be more sure that he is your person, or you may say, you know, I never knew where this guy Dave came is coming from, but man, I just bumped into Dave and he took everything from Walter that I felt and he swapped it up in one in one easy breath. Yeah. So, you know, this is the time to explore all this without really making it too complicated. Yeah, well, I guess would that be your advice to take the next, you know, couple months at school and really mm-hmm. make sure, still keep in touch, don't yeah. shut the door, but kind of be open and honest up front and say, hey, I think we should really try to date, make sure we're each other's person. Like, I want to be with you at the end of the day. Because I'm not sure if they've even had that conversation of like, let's get back together. It sounds like it's kind of there. Like there's think, some I, breadcrumbing. There is definitely breadcrumbing. And but it, it, and she's trying to decide what she really wants to do. And my answer is just do it organically. You don't, don't pressure it. Don't have to say, you are my boyfriend. I am your girlfriend. Don't date anybody right now. But what if she doesn't have that conversation and he does start dating someone and she misses her shot? I mean, think about how many write-ins we get like that. I missed my shot. I never told him how I felt. We get a lot of those too. They they have told each other how they feel. I think in a sense, like by saying, oh, you're the gold standard of women. I think that in a sense, but no no one, no one has clearly said, I want to end up with you. I love you, but I'm at school for another year. I think until I'm back, I think we should really make sure we're the one for each other. And that might involve a couple dates for both of us. Right. No problem saying that. Yeah. I just feel like that might be better just in case. Well, it's not a deal breaker for me. So go ahead and do it. (laughs) It's okay. Yeah. It might be. I don't know. This is, it's interesting though. I think they, I think they both know what they feel with, without saying too, without giving too much commitment, let it just ride itself out because they might find somebody else in the middle of this thing in the next six months. Mm -hmm. And if they do it, and it's better. It's better. But it's better that it happens now. I kind of think it's manipulative in a way. If you say, "Hey, don't date. We're, you know, we're. I want to. End up, I want to end up with you, and let's let's commit each other. To, you know, right now to each other. It almost seems a little anxious or a little. Um, I don't know. I feel like sometimes when you know, you know. Put it's it this like way: long what, distance isn't a big way. deal. When I've been in love. I don't date anybody else. I've turned very monogamous and that's where I'm at because that's the person I'm with. It's simple. No one, no one even has to say anything. That's the, it's because that's how I feel. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. It's solid. So make sure, I think the only thing that I would make sure of is that you tell him how you feel and like you guys are very clear. So you never, I feel like you never want to not say it and then no, it's honesty. you're the right in you can two say, years you, that, can, you can have honesty with the with yeah. your best friend you can tell your best friend anything it's honest if it's honesty you can share it that's totally totally fair let us know yes keep us posted moving along okay another one of this week's partners is kiwi co 
I have a niece and nephew, and they are thinkers. They're smart kids. They love to be entertained, but it can be hard to engage them and keep their attention for long periods of time, which is where KiwiCo came in on my recent trip home to Minnesota. I took out this amazing science chemistry type kit, and we went to town doing experiments for three hours. And the very next day when I came back, they took the kit out again and were using it before I even got there. My sister-in-law even made a comment unprovoked that this is the longest she's seen her kids engaged without a screen in quite some time. And the best part is that you guys don't have to put the thought, energy, effort into building these kits. They get sent right to your door. It's a fun experience for your kid to open them. And then you get to benefit from that bonding time of doing that project or activity together. And there's something for kids of all ages. Seriously, zero to 100. We're all kids at heart, right? And age doesn't matter. But seriously, there's even sensory mats for little babies, science and art for older kids. I'm obsessed with KiwiCo. It's going to be a gift I give all the kids in my life and I little subscription. And these aren't super crazy out of budget kits either. Some of them start at just $15. And with our code, it's going to help. Redefine learning with play. Explore hands-on projects that build creative confidence with KiwiCo. Get 50% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line at kiwico.com slash FKS. That's 50% off your first month at kiwico.com slash FKS. Number two, three. This is three. Yeah. Hi, Jerry, Justin, Morgan, Holly. (laughs) Thank you so much for all of the great thoughtful advice you give on the podcast. I, 19 female, have been with my boyfriend, 20 male, for over three years. While we've had a few small bumps, overall, our relationship has been amazing. He's smart, funny, creative, incredibly loving. Just being around him makes me feel beautiful and happy. We were each other's first partners, and when we first started dating, we were really just innocent kids falling in love for the first time. Now we're both starting to have to deal with real adult issues, college, rent, jobs, and figuring out our futures. We both are very happy being together right now and want to stay together long term. However, we've both acknowledged that we're still very young and we can't predict how our wants and needs will change over the years. He has told me that he's worried he'll someday feel unsatisfied having dated only one person, but that at the same time, he really doesn't want to leave me. He said that a bit of him wishes he could have dated other people and then still get to spend the rest of his life with me. All of these thoughts are very abstract and theoretical to him right now. He says he currently doesn't have an actual desire to explore outside of our relationship and doesn't necessarily think he ever will. Still, I can't help but feel terrified that a few years down the line, he'll decide I'm not enough and that he wants to date other people. I can't see myself ever being open to any kind of polyamory, and so I think this would definitely be the end of our relationship. It feels a bit silly in some ways because I can't say for sure that years down the line, this relationship will still be right for me either. Yet, I don't think I would ever be bothered by having only been with one person, And so it feels like that if someday he does come to that conclusion, it will mean that what we had just wasn't enough. I feel like a part of me is just waiting for him to end the relationship and that by investing more in our relationship, I'm setting myself up for more devastating heartbreak. I know that all of his thoughts are very abstract for him right now and that he very likely will never feel the need to act on them, but I just can't seem to let go of this anxiety. How can I still enjoy and deepen our relationship, even knowing that these possibilities for the future exist? You've had relationships, yes? More than one? A few. Okay. When you are having a physical relationship with somebody and you don't have the depth of everything else that goes along with it, how long does that relationship satisfy you? Um, I think it's very different for women at least it was for me. Well, I'm asking, you're a woman. I'm asking you as a woman. I think a lot of times guys are quicker to sabotage and cause a breakup or breakup than girls. Like I was definitely in a lot of relationships that I wasn't completely satisfied with that I stayed in hoping that things would, you know, really deepen or develop further. Um, So I don't know. I think maybe that's just a me thing, but I've, I've definitely been the person that sticks in relationships that probably didn't serve me in the way. Did you have any relationships that were 
that were here today and gone tomorrow, any quickies uh, is what I will call it, that they were not deep. Well, yeah. I mean, you so, meet someone out at a bar. And- yeah. So the point that I'm trying to get is here she's got a, a relationship that has more than just sex and more than, uh, you know, get getting together sex, you know, they have a, they have a relationship where they trust one another. They share each other. They they're growing within their their life. So as that goes on, you can certainly tell him, you know, let's break up and go try other stuff. You know, the grass is always greener type of a of a thought, and you'll find out it's not always greener. Not that you you may not find somebody that is more fulfilling and and is a different type of person and you didn't give yourself a chance to meet the different type of individuals that are out there. But if you think that you're going to be with someone that's been so special and you're the next person you're going to meet is going to be that person, probably not. Maybe. But yeah. prob- my bet is probably not. You know, look, you got to turn over a lot of stones to find the magic one. And... If, if he's wondering what it is to be with another woman just to see what it is, or you want to be with another man to see what it is. Look, you're not giving your heart to that person. You're not giving your ever essence to that individual. You're sharing a moment of physicality. And sometimes you might have to do that just to get it through your system, That what it really is all about. I can't tell you not to do it. Yeah. But I do know that, you know, when people have had affairs and they say, oh, it was nothing. Well, sure, it was something because you, you broke the trust and that bond with with the person you had the bond with, that, that wouldn't happen. But you also did find out it really wasn't anything. It was a sexual experience that when you were done, you're just like, how do I get out of here? It, it, that's somewhat is, is, is the path it takes. Yeah, I think a lot of times, and I wish Justin was here to kind of answer this because he dated his high school sweetheart Mm -hmm. until I think his junior year or senior year of college. And Mm -hmm. they broke up, you know, towards the end of his educational career. Mm -hmm. And I think he kind of, we've talked about that he would have definitely regretted had he ended up with that person and never experienced other people. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's a guy thing or like if I just also feel kind of the same way because I didn't end up with my high school love. And Mm -hmm. then I'm like, God, thank God I didn't because wow. But some people do end up with their high school loves. I mean, we had a story before this that Mm -hmm. her high school love is her first love, her truest love. So I, I shared something with you and we brought up Marina last week and I'll bring her up again this week. When we were dating after about three years, I wanted to know what it felt like with other people. Yeah. And I point blank said, and, and I know that she also had curiosity and I said, I'm not going to cheat on you. I'm just going to tell you point blank that I think that we need to go our separate ways right now. Cause I'm not feeling locked anymore. Yeah. And I unlocked it because I wasn't feeling the lock. But after years later, I realized that I had something very special with that person. But it was years later. Yeah. And I've and I certainly had many lives with people that I that I had deep love for. It just didn't work out. And maybe that I, I thought you know whatever that feeling I had because it was so you know true whatever it was for that moment and how we could be honest with one another. So you know you relish the fact that you can be honest with this person, but if you if you need to explore or they need to explore, get it out of your system. Don't have that wonderment. I wish I would have, I, you know, did I make the right decision? Go with it. See what happens. You'll end, you may end up right back together. It happened with, with Matthew. It happened, it happens with, with, it so many happened people. with my nephew. It happened with my other nephew. It, well, it, and it almost feels like this writer is holding her breath until he chooses to leave her. Mm-hmm. She and could, I think she, she can make of, the determination herself. Well, and I think she says this here. I feel like a part of me is just waiting for him to end the relationship. Mm-hmm. And that by investing more in our relationship, I'm setting myself up for more devastating heartbreak. And I think that is like super unfair to put yourself through. Absolutely. Break up. If he's, you know, saying these things to you, it's coming from a place of reality reality this is a f- big fear in his head i think he's kind of saying this these things and opening up and being this honest 
almost as a way of like asking for permission. And like, he doesn't want to hurt you by the sounds of it. He does care for you. But the best thing for the two of you could be a break. Mm -hmm. Like people do have midlife crisis and cheat on their wife and the mother of their children because they didn't sow their wild oats. Mm -hmm. This has happened for quite a few people in my life Mm -hmm. that I know of. Like it happens. So I'm fully in the boat of like, if we're meant to be, we will be. Mm -hmm. And I would rather us date other people, make sure that this is right then keep trying to force something and then you regret things 10 years down the road. I'm with you. So if he's saying these things, it's coming from somewhere. I agree. And that's something to consider. And it's also, it's not fair for you to keep holding your breath like that. I say you pulled the trigger. Yeah, there is a little additional more info. I think one thing that could help me would be to have more social connection in my life. I currently only have one close friend along with a handful of more distant ones. I am someone with a lot of anxiety and really enjoy my alone time. So making friends has always been really hard for me. Relate. I think making friends as an adult is a lot harder. But it it's it's easy to make friends when you're younger. You have the same shared experiences as mm-hmm. your peers. You go to school every day. You're together every day. You see them all the time. There's such a unique social connection there. So it does take a little bit more investing to make friends as an adult. But I think you can do it. I have social anxiety. It sucks. You you don't stay with this person only for the fact that he's satisfying that need. You need to really be with somebody for the right reasons. Bumble BFF, get on there. I mean, there's so many people that are in the same boat as you and have a hard time making friends or join a club that has something you're interested in, like crocheting or things like that. So do I hear you saying what I'm saying that let the butterfly go free for a little bit and see what happens? I think... Yes, if she is constantly going to be waiting for the other shoe to drop. If she can let go of that anxiety and just be happy in this relationship and not worry and give him the faith that he will figure his head out on his own, then no. But if this is going to be something that weighs on you and you're just holding your breath and anxious. Do it now. Do it now. Yeah. I always say, you know... um, well, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. It will come back to me. But the bottom line is, is don't, 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 don't sit around and waiting for it. Oh, I know what it was. If you're going to start keeping score, game is already over. I don't think there's anything to keep score here, though. She's wor- She's waiting for the shoe. That's to not drop. keeping score. But, keeping score is when someone does something bad to you. Well, she's waiting for the shoe to drop, and she's living on that pins and needle. And as far as I'm concerned. Don't live that way. It's not healthy. Mm -mm. I would love to hear from other listeners who might have gone through something similar like this. It's almost like professing it's going to happen. It does feel like manifesting. And like, I think, I think sometimes like the longer you get to sit and like fess about something, the more you sit there and think about it and it just bubbles up and like builds. I think the more power you give it, let him go date other people. Like he is going to find that if your connection is real, he's going to find that there's nothing better out there versus building up this idea in his head that, oh my God, I could have so many other women and these experiences. And if he watches porn, he's probably got a really unrealistic a, like view of what sex actually is with other women. So I I say... Give him a shot. And and the, one other item, the more that you are uh, waiting and you have these, these emotions going on, you're not being yourself. And you're actually, you know, bringing a side of you out that may not be good for your relationship. And again, self-destructing it. So yeah. I think that, you know, be, you know, more pronounced about it, be more sure of yourself about it by letting him go do this thing. And I agree. Okay. Keep us posted. And other listeners, if you've been through this, write in. Um, I know a lot of times there's like little things in relationships, the seven year itch, the five year scratch or whatever they call that kind of stuff. So what's it for three years? The three year itch. No, it's a seven-year itch, the five-year... The three-year itch is a term used to describe challenges that may arise in the third year of the relationship. Mm. Based on theories about the stages of love, this theory argues that relationships often end or start to experience conflict around year three. Mm. 
What about year one? Seven year itch is also a thing. I think year one is oftentimes the honeymoon phase. It, around it around all. nine months to a year, start stuff starts to really come out. Mm -hmm. All good. All right, let's roll on to the next one. Another one of this week's partners is Factor. With fall starting to be in full swing, you might be looking for some wholesome, easy, convenient meals for jam-packed days, which is where Factor can come in. They have ready-to-eat meal kits that are chef-prepared, dietitian approved and delivered straight to your door. There's no cooking involved. Seriously, you open them up, put them in your fridge, and they're easy to make. Most of the meals Factor sent us were ready in just two minutes, and each one had a protein, veggies, and left me feeling really good. I loved everything I've tried from Factor, especially those chicken meals. And these meals are never frozen, and you can adjust them to your schedule and your food preferences. You can choose from 34 weekly flavor-packed meals that are ready to eat in just two minutes. Seriously, there's going to be something for you and anyone else in your family you're trying to feed this fall. And it's going to save you a lot of time in the kitchen and keep you out of those grocery stores. So if you're ready to try Factor for yourself, head to factormeals.com slash FKS50 and use code FKS50 to get 50% off. That's code FKS50 at factormeals.com slash FKS50 to get 50% off. Link is also in the description. Hi, Jerry Morgan and Justin. He's gone. He's on a plane. He's on a plane going to London. Before I say anything, I just want to say I love you guys. I've been watching Two Hot Takes forever and started watching Father Knows Something as soon as y'all started making it. I hope I can come to one of the live shows soon if I ever get out of Florida. Oh. You don't need to leave Florida. We'll be there well, soon. I'm going to be in Florida in October. LOL. Anyways, here's the problem I'm having. I, 22 female, have been with my boyfriend, 28 male, for about five months now, officially, but we've been friends for almost a year. When we first met, we weren't very close and were more just friends of friends, but we started hanging out a lot more frequently about two months before we started dating. It has a lot to do with me living with my abusive ex, who never let me have a life, even though we weren't dating anymore. Anyways, my now boyfriend has been an angel to me. I've literally never been happier in my life. I didn't even want to get into a relationship as fast as I did. My ex and I had only been broken up for about six months before me and my current boyfriend started dating, but he makes me incredibly happy, and I couldn't imagine not being with him. Here's my issue, though. I'm waiting. I feel like I don't really know him that well. I feel like any time I try to talk to him about his past, his feelings, his goals and aspirations— or literally even how his day was, he's always just very vague. And I've asked all the questions, even found some dumb TikTok videos of things to know about your partner, blah, blah, blah. And anytime I ask, he's very short or just doesn't really seem like he wants to answer. I don't know. I've always been very open and I love communication. I'm also pansexual, so I've primarily dated women. He's the second man I've seriously dated. And maybe I'm just used to girls who pour their hearts out to each other. Haha. -ha. I guess I'm just wanting a man's perspective on this or even Morgan. Is this strange to you? The only other man I've dated did the typical abusive love bombing thing. And so they always poured their heart out to me when they hurt me. So maybe I'm just used to that. I don't know. Anyways, sorry for rambling. I would love some advice on the situation or how I can get him to open up to me without sounding like I'm prying. I really feel like I'm falling in love with him, but I really just want to feel like I know him more before saying anything to him because I have a lot of trauma around the L word, LOL. Anyways, thank you guys. You know, sometimes um, things flow out naturally when the circumstance, you know, appears. Having a guy, you know, meeting, meeting somebody and saying, here, just do the, you know, your mental dump doesn't always work. I mean, it takes... Time to, you know, to let the egg, the crack an egg. There, there's some saying, I'm, I know I'm going to screw it up, but it takes time to, uh, to, to let the person open up and start really sharing. You don't get all that in the first year. It takes time. I don't think that anyone's an open book right off the bat, especially if they have a lot of seasoning in them and a lot of experiences that, you know, cause them to 
have a little pain or whatever. So I think you just, you know, gain trust and circumstance. And I think this will all come out naturally. If you find out after, you know, a year or, or longer that, you know, things aren't coming out and you can say, you know something, honey, if I, I, I really don't know certain things about you and I'd like to understand a couple items. And if you can identify what you're really trying to ask him, maybe that might help and he'll be free with it. If he's totally locked down, that may be a problem that's going to be apparent for the rest of your lives and you have to make that choice. Can I live with a guy that can't open up to me? Because obviously we all want to be able to understand the person we were with. I was with somebody that would not crack that egg open. 95% was was all there or 90% was wide open, but there was a 10%, you know, blanket or or shroud over something. And to me, that really devastated the relationship. Mm -hmm. I wanted full disclosure. I give full disclosure and I want it in return. It, It wouldn't work for me. So that's something you're going to have to find out for you over time to see if he does crack open or not. Yeah, I'm I'm just getting a lot of red flags here though. I I think someone who is very short with you when you're asking mm. minimally invasive questions is holding back, not being super truthful. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of the examples were like I try to ask him literally anything about his past, his feelings, goals, aspirations, literally how his day was. Mm-hmm. This sounds like someone who might be hiding something, Mm -hmm. whether that's another girlfriend or I don't know. But I think after six months of dating or five months of dating. Well, what are the first five and six months all about? It's really about getting to know someone. Right. And if they're unwilling to answer any of your questions, how well do you know him? Why are you falling in love if you don't really know him? Are you falling in love with him or are you falling in love with the way he makes you feel about yourself? Because someone cannot share about themselves and still make you feel beautiful. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have a good time. Wine you, dine you, whatever. But I think... What's the depth of him? What's the depth? Like, I think there needs to be a lot more substance Mm -hmm. for a healthy relationship. And this is just giving me really weird vibes. Um, In her post that she wrote in, she shared like a Reddit thread and I went to go look at the Reddit thread and I'm like, oh my God, this dude sounds terrible. I about like, I about panicked because it was a post where it was like an 18 year old girl writing in about her 22 year old boyfriend that says he'll break up if they don't have sex. And I was like, oh my God. Okay. Break up. (laughs) Break up. Break up. up. (laughs) So I searched the email in our forums and luckily found... Um, another submission that goes, hey, sorry, I just submitted about getting my boyfriend to communicate and I posted the wrong Reddit link. I'm browsing and forgot I linked something else. Here's the correct link. Thank you because I was about to fully panic. (laughs) So the Reddit post is my boyfriend doesn't share his emotions and I'm not sure what to do. She has since deleted it. But I can see if I can find it. There's a pattern. He just doesn't. He's not opening up. To what level? Evidently to the, the, to the extreme level. Yeah, I unfortunately cannot pull up the old post. Um It's a big bummer, but Reddit has banned a lot of third-party applications from saving stories and all of these things. And it's just really frustrating for a lot of Reddit users. It's also made the moderators' lives a lot harder. Um, It's just brutal. But Someone does post a similar problem on Quora. My boyfriend doesn't speak about his feelings. According to him, he is more simple than me. Is it normal? How can I make him express his feelings? And someone responded, 
I am curious why a deep person is attracted to a shallow person. I've been there. And usually it was physical and the rest of the relationship didn't hold up spiritually or mentally. And I will say like, Justin is very in tune with his emotions, his sexuality, his feelings. Yeah, he might not, you know, open up when he's really, really struggling, you know, as easily as some people. But like once I sit down and I'm like, let's talk about this. Like you seem stressed, then he'll open up. But like he sometimes feels like he doesn't want to burden me with problems. But he's very in tune, very willing to share. And I, I've dated a lot of guys, a lot of different guys. Um, and like thinking about these past relationships, I don't know if I've ever dated someone like this who doesn't share anything. If you ask them about their day, they don't say anything. If you ask them about their goals. That's not even normal. That's not, that's what I'm saying. Like this, the more I think about this and the more I think about my relationships with a variety of guys, that's not normal. Like a lot of guys love talking about themselves or their activities, their hobbies. And if he's not willing to share anything exciting about himself or his life, like I don't even care if it's Call of Duty or video games or the new Mission Impossible that's coming out. Like I don't care what it is, but like if there's nothing he's opening up about and sharing, I think not, he's dead. <laughs> it's, it might fizzle. It just might be hard. It, I, I just don't know how you get past that. Like, there's one boyfriend I do think about. Um, and I, when I started dating Justin, he was my most recent ex, and we dated for two and a half years, almost three years. It was a long time, but I remember sometimes we would be driving in the car, and I was younger at the time too, but. We'd be driving and I'd, I'd kind of think like, I don't have anything else to talk to him about. Like, this is weird. I go, someone that you plan on spending the rest of your life with, like, is it normal to run out of things to talk about? Or not, like- have, not, if, not if you're going to spend your life with or them. Or have your silences kind of feel like, like silence is good sometimes. Like when mm-hmm. me and Justin drive in the car and I'm reading or we're on a flight, like we don't talk, like silence is okay. Silence is good. Mm -hmm. but this silence felt wrong. And when I started dating Justin, I remember thinking, I never run out of things to talk to him about. I never feel like I'm forcing a conversation Mm -hmm. or pulling pulling teeth, trying to get him to Mm -hmm. talk to me. But he was still willing to share. This ex was still willing to share about himself, his goals, his future, so I don't know. This is this is a strange one when you think about it. We really don't know how bad it really is, but she does. Mm-hmm. And she's got to really make the determination where she's getting her fulfillment in this relationship. Yeah. And if you're not being fulfilled because he's not talking, then it's, you know, you got to weigh that, that in your decision. Say, that's not what I want for my life. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because she says they were friends for five months before they started dating or something in there. Oh, I'm sorry. They've been dating for almost five months. We've been friends for almost a year now. So it's like when you were just friends, what did you talk about as friends? Something got them there. I mean, like you had to, there had to be something. So why now all of a sudden is he shutting down? Is he going through something? Is he depressed? Is there a mental health issue? Does he have another girlfriend on the side? Why isn't he opening up? Like, start asking the questions. And like, if he's unwilling to ever engage with you, then you have a problem. And this is a very one-sided relationship. And it's time to maybe walk and go on with your life. Yeah, I don't know. But I would find this to be very hard to maintain long-term. And evidently she is. Yeah. Okay, moving along. Okay. One last one here. Dear Jerry, I, 28 female have reached my current age without ever having had a relationship or physical intimacy. I've always wanted to find my person, but have gotten to the point where I don't know if there's something wrong with me in the dating equation. I am a neurodivergent high school teacher who has worked to be on my own since the day I turned 18. I am short, a tomboy, blunt, straightforward, and I like to think I'm communicative. I always have been the one to have a lot of guy friends since I grew up with brothers and boy cousins and have no problem being one of the guys. 
I have been told by others that I've gone on dates with that I am not dateable. I am aware that I am not most people's type physically. I am medically obese and things are in the works to get things diagnosed and sorted. But I like to think my personality is okay. I go to therapy once a week due to my job being the way that it is in today's age. I'm told I'm too masculine as a woman and there's something wrong with me for still being a virgin. There's some PTSD from childhood. I don't wear makeup because of texture issues, but I can weld, have my own power tools, can fix basic things in my car, and I curse like a sailor. I like to think of myself as self-sufficient and independent. What am I doing wrong? I want a guy to love me for who I am, who can communicate on my level, but I seem to be too much. Are my standards too high? Am I doing something wrong? I'm at a point where I feel like I will be the single virgin forever. Sorry if my sentences are scattered. Just had the first day of school and my ADHD brain is shot. Ideal outcome would be getting that wonderful fatherly advice. My bio dad isn't really in the picture and hasn't been around for me. Look, I feel that there's a shoe for every foot. There's a matching shoe. And you haven't found your match. The fact that you are a welder, you're able to fix things, you're mechanical. Look, there are people out there that would absolutely love someone that can that, that has those talents that's artistic and they want to do things together like that you know i just don't know what messages you're sending out and you know it, when you meet a guy that you're able to get into that flirtatious moment or, or if if that's even what it takes it's just the reality that you're with people or with a person that sees you who you are and says, wow, I'm attracted to that individual. You know, everything else about you is not a, is, is not a hindrance. It's just finding the right person that, that needs that a person like you in their life. Mm -hmm. That's really what it is. Yeah. I feel the same way. I think there is someone for everyone. I think it would just be maybe pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how you've found dates that you've gone on in the past, but if you're not on dating apps, I would try dating apps or maybe like um, Match.com, more of those like traditional sites. Now, but I will say, she said something about younger P uh, PTSD. Mm -hmm. She has some issues from before. Maybe something that happened earlier with your PTSD is is kind of s snuffed out some of the messages that you would or that you would send out to someone that you would be interested, and you're sabotaging yourself not to get yourself in that situation. We don't know enough. Yeah. I mean, that's something she could address in therapy, especially yeah. she's going once a week, which right. is amazing. Um, I think that's like the best maintenance for ourselves is therapy. So I would just like kind of evaluate that. Like, are you putting yourself out there? And I know you say like you have no problem being one of the guys um, and you have had someone tell you you're undateable, which no, that's not true never at all. That. But I would say, like, there was an episode of um, Survivor I watched, and there was this woman on there named Twyla, and Twyla was a construction worker. Mm -hmm. She herself called herself very masculine. She was one of the guys. These are all kind of Twyla's describing mm -hmm. words for herself. Um, and even Twyla married with kids. So Twyla found her person. But there was a lot of conflict between Twyla and the other women because Twyla was like scared of embracing anything feminine. And, you know, Twyla did open up eventually with these other women. She let them braid her hair. Mm -hmm. You know, she embraced another side of herself that she wasn't used to. Mm -hmm. And if you grew up with a lot of brothers and boy cousins, like you might not have had that chance to embrace that side of yourself mm -hmm. if you feel that side of yourself even. And so maybe try to get in touch with that. Go get your nails done. Get your hair done. Pamper yourself a day. Mm -hmm. I think there's ways that might put you in touch with yourself mm -hmm. and then, you know, make you feel better, make dating more fun. By the way, men do get their nails done and get their feet done. And they sure do. Me and, and Justin have and our... Pa and pamper themselves. So you don't have to be... Uh, you one don't that have thing. to be feminine to do that. No. Yeah, no, not at all. You... No, me and Justin have our monthly petties. It's a good time. Yeah. But I think I would just try to push yourself out of your comfort zone and really put yourself out there. I mean, you're, you're 28. It will happen when it happens. 
Yeah. You don't have to force it. No, but you do have to make yourself available. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of my friends have struggled with that. Um, when I talk to them and I'm like, how are things going with dating? They're like, well, I'm just kind of letting it happen organically. Mm -hmm. But they're still unhappy with where they're at. They don't want to be single. They want to find their person. And I'm like, in today's age, especially with COVID, mm -hmm. it's harder to meet someone in a grocery store aisle or at a bar and things like that. So you might have to put in a little more effort to put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. And I would recommend like, like when it comes to like a dating profile and putting that together, you say you like welding and you know, you can fix a car. Are those your hobbies? Like if welding is a passion, I'd put that on there. Mm -hmm. Some guy might see you welding and be like, damn, this is cool. And then you never know. You're the next hot DIY yeah. YouTube couple. Right. I mean, you could be doing stuff with, uh, you know, even f with charities doing, you know, welding projects, the art, you know, art projects with things that you can become part of a community and meet people that have the same interests. And that's where it begins. You mm -hmm. find someone that has the same interest as you and you guys start having fun together. And, exactly. You know, before you know, you're hooking up. Join some clubs, put yourself out there and get into some like welding clubs or I don't know, whatever else you're interested in, like join some clubs. That's one way to meet people organically too. Mm -hmm. Like put yourself in situations that you typically enjoy. And finding people that enjoy the same things. Exactly. That, that's, that's the most important part. Yeah. I mean, I really never wanted to meet somebody in a bar because I don't like hanging out in bars. Exactly. So why would I hang, why would I go meet somebody in the place where I, the last place I really want to hang out? I think that's a mistake a lot of people make. And yeah. like, that's a part of the problem too. Like I, I had to have a conversation with a friend of mine because she really, really was wanting to settle down and get married and she wants kids. And she kept dating these guys that are party boys. They black out every weekend. They do drugs. And I'm like, you're putting yourself in situations where you're not even going to meet the right person. Mm -hmm. I go, it's no wonder you keep getting hurt. Like put yourself in a situation where you're going to meet those good people that want the same things as you. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. But that's all I got for this episode. Unless you have any last minute tips for finding love, <laughs> staying in love. What You're you asking me for tips on how to yeah. stay in love? What do you got for the people? Oh my goodness. Um, just find someone that you like to have fun with. Mm -hmm. If you want to stay in love, find someone that is, that is a good match for you and that you guys have a meeting of the minds. That when you think about doing things and stuff, it's the same kind of fun things and you're able to communicate. Yeah. And it's fun to be, look, you're having fun with, with, with Justin. A lot of fun. Yeah. It's a good time. I mean, everything you guys do, you guys really enjoy growing together. And even this woman that just wrote in, she's obviously not looking under the, ro the right rocks. So if you, if you give it a chance and find some people in your area, look, it will happen. If, if, if for, for whatever um, things that you're doing, it, if you're with the right person, it will all unlock. Mm -hmm. It just unlocks. So yeah, allow yourself. Definitely. That's really all I have. Okay. So Sign us off. I would like to say thank you for turning in this week. And I'm glad we are here to be able to join you in your homes or cars or wherever you are. It's a lot of people like us as they're cleaning. As they're cleaning. As they're cleaning mechanism. I hope you had a good time doing your dishes and vacuuming and all those fun things. I'm going to be doing this for the next five days in my house because mm -hmm. I came home and Morgan and I have just let our place go upside down. You know what I've decided though? Tell me. I'm not even going to bother cleaning. I'm just, the minute I get back from traveling... I'm going to start putting things in boxes. And as I put them in the boxes, getting ready to move, yep. then I'll downsize. But my my room and my mess is so far gone. I don't see a way out but doing that. Mine is really out of control. Yeah, we so have really struggled. If anybody wants to take a trip you know, and spend a week vacation in our place. No, God, you don't. <laughs> That's not a vacation. That is torture. <laughs> We've really let our shit go. But I heard something the other day. I think yeah. it was on Mel Robbins' podcast. And she said, you don't have to expect all the areas in your life to be put together at one time. And it, I don't know if it was Mel. I think it was a guest she had. And her mind was even kind of blown. Because I think we hold ourselves to these expectations that 
My house needs to be spotless. My dishes need to be put away. My kids shouldn't have any dirty clothes. Everything should be clean. Morgan, That's unattainable I, for I, a lot of people. I have everything everywhere. We are and, a different story. And I am going to clean up and organize. We are bad. We are definitely I, bad. But I think like, don't stress if you're in our boat as well, like the messy depression boat. Like, Just focus on one little area at a time. I am. You can do it. It will get better. But uh, thank you guys for being here. Be sure to head over to Patreon. We have a Patreon this week? Um, There should be two by the time this has been posted. Good. Justin should be getting back from London. uh, Well, not London, Minnesota for our live show to record the last two. Are these, uh, is this going to be one of the Patreons we did last night? The patrons we did last night will be on there. Oh, guys, these there's some good ones there. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, they definitely tune into the Patreon. Yeah, but I've recorded nine episodes this week, and I am completely wiped. So, uh, so we're gonna say good night. Good night. Love you all so much. So see you next week. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>